this afternoon uh, about, I want to speak about or preach about hell. Now I know it's not a nice subject, but we all need to understand we're on our way down to hell because of our sin. But God does not want that, and that's why he sent the Lord Jesus Christ to be our Saviour. So there's four things I want to look at here. Uh, number one, where is hell? Number two, what's happening in hell? Number three, uh, who goes to hell? And number four, which is the most important, how to stay out of hell. Obviously, we don't want to go down to hell if we're in our right mind, that is. You know, there's a place called heaven, and that's the place that I'm sure you want to be. But there's also a place called hell, and God does not want you to go there. And that's why he sent the Lord Jesus Christ to be our saviour. Well, that's why I'm here this Arvo, to bring you the message of salvation, the way to be in heaven, the way to stay out of hell and be in heaven instead. Now, the first uh, mention of hell is in Deuteronomy 32 and verse 22. For fire is kindled in mine anger, this is the words of the Lord, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. And number one, where is hell? Proverbs 15 verse 24, the way of life is above to the wise, that he may depart from hell beneath. Isaiah 14 and verses 12 to 15, this is speaking about Lucifer. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Uh, how art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet. Yeah. Thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Here's a person, his name's Lucifer. He was lifted up with pride because he was very beautiful. The point is this, God had to kick him out of heaven. He was cast out of heaven because of his rebellion, because of his pride. Because he was lifted up with pride because of his beauty. He couldn't stay in heaven. As I said, God had to kick him out of heaven. And now, of course, he's uh, deceiving people. He's deceiving people wholesale. You know, people think that, you know, you can do what you want, when you want, how you want, whatever, and get to heaven. There's no way. You and I have to come by faith, put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We've got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be in heaven. We'll never be there apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you like the way to heaven? God bless you. Do you like the way to heaven? The way to heaven? Have a good night. Yes, yeah, so as I said, Lucifer was cast out of heaven. In Numbers 16 verses 1 to 5, now Korah, the son of, the son of uh, Isaac, the son of Kohath, uh, Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abarim, the sons of Eliab, and Om, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men, and they rose up before Moses, which said of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, uh, famous in the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron, and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift up ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. And he spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who is holy, and will cause him to come near unto him. Even him whom he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto him. 
Verse 28 says, and Moses said, where, uh, Hereby uh, you shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works. For uh, I have not done them of mine own hand. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up, uh, with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, that means, and they go down alive into the pit, then shall he understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass as he had made an end of speaking all these words that the ground clave under that was under them. Sorry, that the ground clay asunder that were spirit part that was under them. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their houses and all the men that appertained unto Korah, and all their goods, they and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them. And they perished from among the congregation. Ezekiel 32 and verse 18, Son of man, wail for the multitude of Egypt, and cast them down, even her. And the daughters of the famous nations unto the nether parts of the earth, with them that go down into the pit. Nether parts of the earth means the lowermost or depths of the earth. From all these verses we can see that hell is down beneath our feet. It will be relocated in a coming day though. The revelation of Jesus Christ chapter 20 verse 14 says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. There's no need to go into the second death because if you have a new birth, if you have a second birth, you won't go into the second death, which is the lake of fire and brimstone. In other words, the lake of fire and sulfur for all of eternity. God does not want that for you. And that's why the Lord Jesus Christ came. He was crucified upon the cross for you and for me, so that you and I could have opportunity to get right with God, to have forgiveness for our sins. And that forgiveness is only possible through the Lord Jesus Christ. There's absolutely no other way to get to heaven. We need to be in heaven rather than hell, obviously. Uh, you know, as I said before, no one in their right mind would want to go down to hell, that place of suffering and burning and torment. But God has made the way of escape through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He died upon the cross, was crucified for you and for me, so that you and I don't have to go down to hell. Now the message is about hell this afternoon, but there's no need to go there. And so this is basically a warning, a warning from God. That there's no need to go down to hell and you don't need to go there. And God does not want you to go there. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now repentance is a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. That is what God wants for each and every one of us. He wants us to be in heaven. We cannot be in heaven apart from faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who loved us enough to die upon the cross, be crucified for you and for me, shed his precious blood, my friend. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Now, number two, what's happening in hell? Brimstone, that is sulfur, starts out in the molten rock underneath the, or under the earth's surface. It spews out in the lava of volcanoes and often comes to the surface of the earth from volcanoes and hot springs. The scientists will tell us there is fire under the earth's surface. As we saw, hell is beneath our feet. There's no need to go there. God does not want you to go there. I hope you don't go there. That's why I'm here this hour to bring you the message of hope and salvation. Not the 
way to heaven? You know what? The way to heaven. Have a, have a great night. God bless you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yes, Luke 16, verses 19 to 31. This is a, a, a man that actually went to hell in the Word of God, in the Bible. It gives us a glimpse into hell, what it's like. And, uh, yes, Luke 16, verses 19 to 31. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day. In other words, he was very well off, he had not, uh, really nice posh clothes, you know, expensive clothes and that sort of stuff. And, uh, you know, he did really well. He was uh, a prosperous man, he had lots of money and everything. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. So you had both extremes here. One that done, has done really well uh, with in this life, you know, physically, like uh, with his money and possessions and stuff like that. And another man, there was a certain beggar, so he was really poor, named Lazarus, Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented that is tortured in this flame. So people are being tortured in the flames of hell where there is no water because they died without Christ as their saviour. Don't let that happen to you. God does not want that to happen to you. And this afternoon as you listen to this message you need to get right with God. You need to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour so that you can be in heaven. There's no need to go down to hell, although this message is about hell. But I'm here to warn you to flee from the wrath which is to come. God is angry with the wicked every day. That is, those who are not saved, those who are not his children, haven't been born again into God's family through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But if you come in repentance toward God, this other, in other words, you agree with God that you are a sinner, and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. That's what God wants for each and every one of us, that our soul be saved so that we'll be in heaven and not go down to hell. Yes, uh, verse 25, But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. So there's no need to go down to hell and God does not want you to go there. That's why I'm here this hour. To give you another opportunity of getting right with God. Of receiving forgiveness for your sins. But the only way is through the once for all sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross. Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So the Lord Jesus Christ wants you to be saved this hour. Will you be saved? You can be saved. It says here, beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. So that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence or from there. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, in other words, I have five brothers, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. 
From this we can see that the people that are in hell now don't want their relations to go there as well because of the torture they are in. It's a very serious thing to die without the Lord Jesus Christ, you know. Because it will mean we'll be in hell. God does not want you to go down to hell. So now is the time to get right with God to receive forgiveness for your sins. Do you like the way to heaven? Have a good night. God bless you. Do you like the way to heaven? Yeah. Have a good night. God bless you. Yeah. Do you like the way to heaven? Have a good night. God bless you. Now verse 29 says, Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear then. In other words, they have the word of God to warn them and show them the way of salvation, the same as we do. So we have the word of God. In those days, they all were learning in the Old Testament at that point. But we have the Old Testament and the New Testament as well. And the New Testament speaks so much of the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, the whole Bible does. But we need to understand the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified for us upon the cross. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and he was buried. Praise God the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He wants to save your soul this afternoon. Will you come to Christ to be saved? Will you put your faith alone in him? Yes, Romans 10 verse 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. That's why we as gospel preachers get out here and preach the word of God to you, knowing that it's the only way of salvation. The way of salvation is found in the word of God for each and every one of us. Yes, Luke 16 and verse 30, And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, that if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 16 to 23, And if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. This is speak to Christians, to believers. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ to perish. In other words, those that have died being believers. Um, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But... Now is Christ risen from the dead, and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, that is by Adam, came death because of sin, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Christ is uh, risen and people still don't believe. That's the point. Remember he said that look, if one rose from the dead, then they will believe. But that's, that's not the case. Because the most important person in the whole of the universe of God, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, has resurrected from the dead, and people still don't believe. What have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you put your faith in Him for your salvation? You like the way to heaven? The way to heaven? Have a great night. God bless you. Yes, for since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ that is coming. Uh, Psalm 11 verses 5 and 6. The 
Lord tried the heart, but the wicked, and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. Now we'll look at number three. He goes to hell. Psalm 9 verse 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Do you like the way to heaven? Have a great night. God bless you. So, you know, you might think, well, you haven't murdered anyone, so therefore you're not wicked. Now, that, that is a fallacy, you know. The thing is, we're all wicked before we're saved, before we are children of God. God calls us all wicked. And we've got to become righteous. We've got to have the righteousness of God to be able to enter into heaven. We'll never get to heaven apart from the righteousness of God which can be given to you the moment you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Psalm 139 verses 7 and 8 Whither or where shall I go from thy spirit? This is a man talking to the Lord. Or whither or where shall I flee from my presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Uh, Matthew chapter 11 verses 20 to 24. Then began he, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, to upgrade the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they would enter it not. Woe well unto thee, Chorazin, woe well unto thee, Bethsaida, that the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Zidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for uh, Tyre and Zidon at the day of judgment than for you. And now Capernaum, which had exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down the hill, with the mighty works which have been done in thee, had been done in Sodom, they would have remained until this day. We know Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed by the Lord with their fine brimstone because of their sodomy of the day. You know the way to heaven? Yes, but I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. In other words, there are degrees of punishment in the lake of fire and brimstone. Uh, John chapter 3 verse 36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. In other words, if we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we have everlasting life. As a present possession, my friend. You know, some people you talk to, they say, well, you never know whether you're going to heaven until you die. Well, that's a lot of rubbish because you can. If you're a believer in our Lord Jesus Christ, you have the assurance from the God of heaven that you have everlasting life as a present possession right now, right here and now on earth. If you're a believer, if you're saved, if you're a child of God, if you have been born again, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Well, this is why it's absolutely urgent and, uh, it's absolutely urgent to be right with God, to have forgiveness for our sins, to be born again into God's family through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Yes, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. In other words, the wrath of God is hovering over your head if you are not saved, if you're not a child of God. Isn't it about time you thought about eternity? As I often say, eternity is a long time to be wrong. We need to understand, we need to make the right choice while we're still this side of eternity. Because you and I have a decision to make. We're either going to receive the Lord Jesus Christ or we're going to reject or neglect Him. But the outcome is the same for neglecting and rejecting Him. It means hell and the lake of fire for eternity. God does not want that for you. 
He is willing and able to save your soul this hour, my friend. Only if you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, though. Only if you put your faith alone in Him. He's talking about spiritual life here. It's not the way to heaven. Have a great night. God bless you. Thank you. So, all those who don't believe on the Son will be in hell. God does not want you to go down to hell. I add that quickly. Because the Lord Jesus Christ has died for us upon the cross for you and for me. He was crucified for you and for me because of our sin. He himself has no sin and yet he was made sin for us. He knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So when you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you receive the righteousness of God, which means that you can enter into heaven. Because we cannot be in heaven because of our sins. Our sins have shut, it, have shut us out of heaven. We cannot enter heaven because of our sin. And yet God is willing and able to forgive you of all of your sins this hour if you come to the Lord Jesus Christ and put your faith in Him as your own Saviour. See, you know, maybe your mum and dad or whoever, all your, some of your relations are going to heaven, they're Christians, they're believers, they've been born again, but what about you? You have to be born again yourself as an individual before God. In other words, you've got to understand that you're a sinner before God. We're guilty, hell-deserving sinners. That's what we deserve because of our sin. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Do you like the way to heaven? Do you like one? Have a great night. God bless you. Thank you. Now, number four, although we're talking about something that's not really popular about hell this afternoon, well, look at number four. Number four is how to stay out of hell, and this is the most important thing. The only way we can stay out is if we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Luke 24, verses 45 to 47, Then opened he, this is the Lord Jesus Christ, he opened he, their, uh, the, that is, the disciples, their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. So this gospel message was beginning at Jerusalem, but now it's come here to the land down under, the land of Oz. And the message still goes out to you that you might be saved, that you might receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Saviour before it's forever and eternally too late. We are going down the hill by default. God does not want that for you. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Again, what is repentance? A change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. John 3 and verse 17, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's important. We need to understand the only way we can be saved is through the Lord Jesus Christ. And his wonderful sacrificial death upon the cross of Calvary for you and for me. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and he was buried. But praise God, the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He wanted to save your soul from a long lost eternity. At Titus 3 verses uh, 4 to 7, but after that, the kindness and love of God our Saviour toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. But who says he went to Christians, to believers? I wonder, are you saved, this other? Are you a child of God? Have you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and become a child of God through faith alone in him? Yes, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing 
of the Holy Spirit, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Here we see again, the only Saviour for us poor sinners, as we've brought in this world of sinners, is the Lord Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Is he your Saviour? Have you put your faith in him? The one whom to know is life eternal. That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Do you have that eternal life that can only come through faith in the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ? Colossians 1 verse 14, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. So the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ had to be shed upon the cross for the redemption of our soul, which is precious unto the Lord. He wants to save each and every one of us this afternoon. I wonder, are you willing to come to the Lord Jesus Christ and put your faith alone in him? Acts 20 verse 21, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks or Gentiles, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. What is repentance? It's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. Oh, yeah. It's not the way to heaven. Have a good night. God bless you. First Peter chapter 1 verses 3 to 5 Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope, in other words, living hope, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. I wonder, are you on your way to heaven? Or are you still on that broad road that leads down to hell and destruction? In preaching about hell this afternoon, it's not a, not a good place. It's not the place you really want to be. People joke about it, but they don't know what they're talking about. The devil has deceived them into thinking they can have a party and booze and all the rest of the stuff they carry on with them on this earth. It's, it's not going to happen, my friend. Not going to happen at all. You need to be in heaven. It says here, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Do you like the way to heaven? Do you like the way to heaven? I wonder, have you got a reservation in heaven? The only way you can have that reservation is if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and become a child of God. And the last verse, as I've just quoted it, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. That's another proof that a child of God, that is those who have been saved by the grace of God through faith in Christ, a child of God can never ever lose their salvation. It's eternal. So, I wonder where are you headed? Are you headed for heaven? Or are you headed down to hell? There's no need to go down to hell, you can be in heaven. By putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only way that we can get to heaven. Only the Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the way, not a way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I hope you're on your way to heaven, but if not, isn't about time you thought about heaven and you also thought about hell. What is the, you know, there's two opposites here. We have heaven that God wants us to be in and hell where we're headed by default. God does not want that for you. He wants you to be saved this other, my friend. The only way of salvation is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Put your faith in him and your soul will be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord 
shall be saved. Salvation to be yours this afternoon by putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified upon the cross, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching, I appreciate that. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you, have a great night.